Oh, hello. There he is. How are you, man? Good. How you doing? I'm doing great. I'm doing great, all things considered. Good. I'm just, I'm recording to let you know, to make sure. Yeah, oh, so I should, I'll watch the obscenities. Yeah, don't say anything crazy. All right, I won't. I like your plane models up there. See, yeah. two, you get two travel geeks in the same web chat and things get weird immediately. What you got up there? I got it all. You got it Actually, all. Perfect. This one's got, I got the United 787. I got Air Tahiti Nui, Korean Air A380, which we took our honeymoon on. Cool. Um, How are you, ma'am? Good. How's it feel to um, be home? You know, it's uh, it's an unusual feeling for me. I mean, I, I typically spend for the last, I don't know, almost 10 years, really, I've been traveling between 150 to 200 days a year. So this is kind of unprecedented for me. I mean, you hate to, I hate to sound like I'm content in the middle of a tragedy. Uh, obviously, there's a lot of really just terrible things happening. But, you know, there is one part of this for me, which has been, you know, kind of to, to be able to be home with with uh, my family and my kids for an extended period of time feels you know kind of amazing. So uh, we're we're trying to look on the bright side and uh, and enjoy the the time together. Yeah, your kids are about the same age as mine, I think. Yeah, we got uh, four and two. Yeah, mine's three and seven months, eight months. Uh, so are you are you sleeping at all? I am. My wife, not so much. She's like, yeah, yeah. She doesn't trust me sleeping in the same room as a baby because she thinks I'm gonna roll over. And I'm like. Yeah, I went through that same that that same mistrust. So, uh, but you know, now it's good. We actually have them sharing a room now, and they sleep through the night. And so, you know, good things will good things are going to come soon. It is honestly, you know, five years ago, if you're going to say I'm going to have two kids, I'd be like you're crazy, right? But I tell you, it's the best thing ever, and it hasn't cramped our travel at all. I mean, until you know, yeah. quarantine. But um, until, the, until the global pandemic, everything yeah, was fine. We, um, we were traveling a ton. And our little yeah. guy's been on 70 flights. That's which, which, which is way too many. In two years, he went on 70 flights. That's crazy. He's going to hit million miler status before anybody. He's going to be like the youngest million miler status kid wow. in the world. It, it, we're going to change our lifestyle, so we're not traveling that much anyway, yeah. which is, I think that's, that's one of the silver linings out of this. It's, you know, it's nice to be home. And we're fortunate yeah. that we both live in a place where, you know, it's a, it's a great place to have a staycation in, in totally. Southern California. Yeah, totally. Really is. You can go anywhere. But, um, you know, since I know you got to be pressed for time because I just read on the Hollywood Reporter that you got a new show coming up starting yeah. tomorrow night. Yeah, that's right. So we, uh, you know, a few weeks into the into the whole, you know, stay at home thing, uh, the network asked if, if we could try to put something together from here at my house and, um, you know, which now everyone's kind of trying to do that. And um and so we we did, and we <laughs> cobbled together a kind of homemade, you know, set here. Uh, and by we, I mean mostly me. Um, and uh, and we made three kind of three minute episodes of a little like mini talk show. And we did some raps to kind of, you know, um, just kind of for Wednesday nights on Discovery, where where Expedition Unknown would usually air to just kind of say, hey, we're still here, and and uh, you know. Um, that the network is still doing things. And, and then those went really well. And so now they've invited me to do it uh, for an hour each week, which is um, challenging. Uh, we, we are, our first one airs tomorrow night. We are still editing it. So yeah. real, uh, real down to the wire uh, thing here, but it's cool. I mean, it's, uh, it's a real challenge to figure out how to shoot a TV show from your house by yourself. I've never missed my crew more in my life. Um, and to handle all that media and get it uploaded. We have editors working from their houses. So it's kind of like, you know, it's a huge thing, but it's really fun to be able to be working and to be chatting with people. And so I'm enjoying it. That's awesome. I mean, so do they anticipate how long you're going to be home for? I mean, do they say like, you're, you got to get on the road in six months or they're like, we'll just play. You know, I think everyone kind of is the same in the same boat right now, which is that no one knows what's going to happen. You know, I mean, if you ask if, I mean, and again, what do I know? I'm making a blind guess, but I feel like, what do we know? We know the states are going to start to reopen on a rolling basis. Some of them are already trying to do it. And places like here in California are probably going to be later to that party, right? We're much more, uh, being much more conservative, I think, with, with trying to reopen things. But there's going to come a day, uh, pick a day, you know, June 1st, July 1st, whatever it is, there's going to be a day where they reopen businesses, um, 
and they'll probably, you know, enforce more social distancing in workplaces and stuff. So I kind of get that part of it, but the international travel part is really kind of an unknown, right? I mean, sure. you know, one of the big challenges from the TV side of things is that the workers comp um, and insurance companies might not be writing policies that cover people against coronavirus until a vaccine emerges. And that's a huge problem because if that doesn't happen, production companies can't send people out in the world, wow. you know? So the, the big question with, with what's going to happen next in terms of, of our industry is can we get people insured safely to go travel? You know, that's going to be a, a bar that I, I don't know. I mean, it, it um, we'll, we'll see because until that happens, I, the idea of doing our normal schedule, passing through dozens of airports and, flying a dozens of tightly packed flights. I, I just can't see that happening, you know? Right. So it may be that we're homebound here for longer. It may be that we do more of a domestic set of episodes, you know, maybe, maybe we road trip it, you know? I mean, there, lots of things have been talked about, but I think that like the whole rest of the world and like everybody has their own, you know, questions in, in whatever workforce they're in. It's like, we don't really know yet what's gonna happen. Right, I mean, I've heard rumors about multiple countries not opening up until next year. Right. And, uh, uh, Germany just today canceled um, Oktoberfest. I mean, that's Saw that. se September. I mean, yeah. I mean, you know, it's it's um, and then of course there's all these sort of ancillary questions of like, well, what happens if you go to a country and you get sick with this or with something else? Then what? You know, do you, are you allowed back out of the country? And are you going to end up getting your temperature taken at the airport? And now you can't board the flight. You know, so. You know, the, these questions of how freely we're going to be able to move around in the short term, I just think are like a complete guessing game. It's crazy. I can't even believe that I'm sitting here having this conversation, right? It's so... I'm with you. Like, it feels like a few minutes ago, the whole world was normal. And now our entire reality is like upside down. I just, every time I talk about it, I hear myself talking and I go, how is this real? Well, the world was so small two, three months ago. And now it just seems so, so vast. It's just... Yeah. I mean, so by the way, did you get COVID or did you know anyone who did? I knew one person, I know one, only one person, um, knock on wood, who, who's had it, which was somebody that I, you, you know, I, I have to say, I count myself kind of lucky because in February and March, I did a number of speaking appearances. Right. I spoke at a few travel shows where, the, where I probably, um, and, and, and I did a few theater events. I, I um, the very last thing I did was at the Ryman Auditorium in, in Nashville. But like, I probably collectively between those events shook ten thousand people's hands. Oh I mean, really, you know. And at a travel, you show probably Denver, got it. You probably already had it. Uh, you know, I don't know. At a, at a travel show in Denver, one of the other people there who I came into contact with and shook hands with, she got it. Yep. Um, and uh, and she called me, and and I thought, oh man, but. But it had been well outside of a like a three week window, and I'd had no symptoms at that point. Gotcha. And we're quarantined here anyway. We don't really go out and stuff. But you know, I, I um, yeah, it it might be that that uh, some of us have had it and were yeah. asymptomatic. I, I, you know, who who knows? It's uh, until they get the testing thing really sorted. I think that's that's going to remain a mystery. But gotcha. I'm kind of can't believe I didn't get it in March when I was finishing up those events. Me too. I mean. I had people coughing next to me on the plane without covering their mouth. And I was like, I got to get off this thing. Yeah. I saw in Air Canada now, they're asking, they're going to ask people to wear masks for the whole flight. The whole flight. That's besides awesome. eating, I assume. But yeah, I mean, I think that's going to be the future. Also, I think people are going to be get, getting tested before they get on the planes, not just temperature. Yeah. If they can do a, like a rapid test. Well, Etihad's been doing something similar. They were, they're doing scans and... Yeah. Emirates is taking a blood test, actually. Um, is that is that mandated on, on Emirates? I, I'm not sure if it's mandated, but they, they were, they've wow. been starting that. That's crazy. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, you know, I don't know. I mean, be, because I'm such a travel nerd, sometimes late at night, and this is such a lame admission, late at night sometimes I'll go on my phone and I'll pretend to book a flight. I'll go on, like, <laughs> United, and I'll say, okay, tomorrow, what's the flight at 8 a.m. look like from L.A. to Newark? And I'll look at the seating chart and like I looked at today's yesterday and there was like one person in business. There were four or five people in economy plus and maybe 10 people in economy. On the, on, a, on a Dreamliner. Like one a day now, right? It used to be right. 20. On a Dreamliner. 
like there were probably 10 people on the flight. I mean, what's the fuel cost to get from LA to Newark on right. that? I mean, they're just taking a bath. Big time. I mean, listen, I could have bought two weeks ago. I could have bought LA, Miami on American triple seven, $35 round trip. And right. I looked at the seat. I, I was doing the same thing. I looked at the seat map and literally there's like 12 people max on the plane. You yeah. can add a triple seven to yourself. I know. But, but I also noticed, I, I, I then played around with some long haul um, flights like here to, here to London and stuff. And the pricing was, was not good at all. Right. And, and one of the things I've heard, and you, you would know more about this than me, is on the other side of this thing, even though people might think prices are going to come down, airline prices are probably going to go through the roof. Without a doubt. Especially if they have to like not sell seats and put empty seats between people. Like th there's almost no revenue on these flights as it is, right? Right. Well, short term, it's, the prices are going to be low. But long term, you know, if, when it starts bouncing back, you know, all the airlines have cut capacity. So there's going to be a lot fewer seats to sell. But right now, I mean, a lot of the airlines have to fly because if they're getting this bailout money, they got to be able to, they got to still fly to get that bailout money, which is, which I think is crazy because they don't need to be having this many planes in the sky. I, I tweeted the other day about a screenshot of flight aware, how many planes were over America and how many were over Southern Europe. And we had about a hundred times more, at least, Wow. at least it's scary. Yeah, it's like, why do we have so many planes flying? I mean, on those, on those transcontinental flights from LA to New York or San Fran to New York, they could run one of those a day and the planes would probably still be half full. Right. Some of it's cargo, but not a lot. I, I, I can't imagine a lot. I mean, yeah. well, American, for example, was flying, I think, 14 flights a day between LA and JFK. Right now, they're flying zero. Zero. Wow. I was shocked. I went on yesterday to try to see how many miles wow. it would cost or, or price. Zero. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. It's just... Um, it's such a strange thing. And then I think the other really strange thing that's going to happen is kind of in the distant future is when the vaccine does become available right. next year, let's say, hopefully this year, but you know, maybe the, late this year and early next year, once that happens and we get past that, then I feel like everyone's going to go back to the way things were. And this is all going to seem like a strange, surreal dream. Right. You know, there, there's so, some anti vaxxers out there that do not want to get a vaccine. I just read yesterday that you know, the tennis player, uh, Djokovic, he, I guess, is an anti vaxxer, and he's like, you know, he doesn't want to have to get vaccine, vaccinated to travel. And he thinks that most countries will. And I, I agree with him, where I think you're going to have to um, show your paperwork, like you do a lot of countries where you need to have a yellow fever shot and things like totally. that. I mean, that's already, I mean, in, in Southeast Asia, like if you travel to Thailand, you have to have your, your um, vaccine card with you and you've got to show that you've had a yellow fever vaccine. And there are other countries that have uh, Japanese encephalitis, things like that. I mean, that you have to have those vaccines to come in. So that's nothing new. I mean, it's probably new to some people, you know, who, who don't travel to some of those more exotic places, but, um, but yeah, I think that is going to happen for sure. Yeah. It and it should happen. It, without a doubt. And let's hope, let's just hope they find a vaccine. I think they will. I mean, you have to figure every lab on the planet, both, you know, pharmaceutical, private industry and public sector is working on one thing. So Agreed. you have to assume they're going to, they're going to crack the code Agreed. on it. I mean, let's hope. So before we cut and go to our next segment, a yeah. uh, um, couple of things. First of all, you look like you lost a lot of weight. I did actually. I'm looking a little better. I, um, no, I had really packed food? on a lot of weight last year uh, traveling on the road. And uh, since I've been in my house here for the last like three or four weeks, I've lost over 20 pounds. Wow. Um, which is crazy. And really, you know, what most of it is, is um, just having control over my diet. Right. You know, like, um, yeah, I mean, just not eating at restaurants, not eating takeout. Yep. And I've been counting calories. I've been, I've been using one of those uh, fitness apps and I've been counting calories and looking at like what, what goes in. And, you know, when you go to a restaurant and you eat out a full meal, it's appetizer, bread rolls, this, that, drinks. If you knew, uh, people wouldn't eat out. If I, they agreed. Knew. Agreed. I you mean, know? They, um, when they show the I, calories, I'm like, I'm not going to order that one. You know, totally. It's, it's something I, remember, I remember Bourdain said once on an interview somewhere that it's like, you know, there's like a stick of butter in, in, in half the dishes that you order in restaurants. So I taste so damn good, right? Yeah, it's like exactly. there's so much butter and stuff. And um, 
and just so, so many calorie rich drinks and, you know, cocktails and things like that. So being home and just being able to, we're eating really healthy and, you know, I've been going on socially distant walks. I, I've been jogging like, you know, really late at night, really early in the morning. There's no one out there. And um, man, it, it's like a huge difference. You know, on the road, half the time, I'm like, the only food available is like some tube of Pringles at a roadside stand in Africa. And you end up eating mostly prepackaged food, right? Like a lot of times when you travel, there's just less access if you're really on the go to fresh stuff and, and um, unless you have time to do it. And so, yeah, what a difference it makes kind of being cognizant of what, of what we're eating. I lost a little bit of weight too. So before we go tomorrow night, can you give us a preview of your uh, show? Any special yeah, guests? Tomorrow night, uh, Wednesday night, uh, we are on at eight o'clock on discovery channel. It is the 50th anniversary of earth day tomorrow. Uh, and so obviously, um, this is a weird earth day, right? I mean, in some ways it's like the ultimate irony, uh, as we are all here kind of sheltering away from the natural world. Um, and so Discovery really wanted to not let the day slip by and not, and not uh, come together in some way. And so the idea is to come together uh, on the channel for a whole night of programming to celebrate Earth Day. I'll be on from uh, 8 to 9 doing my new talk show, uh, Josh Gates Tonight, and we'll have guests from the Discovery world. I'll be talking to Joel McHale. Uh, I'll be talking to um, ver uh, various folks from shows that are on later in the evening. And then there's going to be a show called Great Global Cleanup. Uh, which is helmed by Zac Efron, which is a, a, about a big cleanup initiative that happens every year. And then a really cool show called Impossible Croc Rescue about a, um, a guy trying to uh, rescue this, this croc in Indonesia. So it's a whole night of like eco programming starts at eight on Discovery Channel. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Cool. Yeah. All right. Well, I'll put a link in there when I uh, post this later today. Thanks, man. All right, buddy. I'll call you right back. All right. You got it. Have a good one. Thank you. You too.